also got black trans over there, black trans, black trans over there. Then we're gonna wrap up with a more brutal murder in this village with TikTok. As crazy as that freaking sounds now, uh, depending on where, where I'm gonna post before or after Thanksgiving, uh, I hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving. And if you did have a happy Thanksgiving, that's awesome. But reading this title just alone is crazy. Uh, you know, in our age of where social media is such a big thing, it is such a huge thing, and everybody wants to be a a YouTuber or TikTok star or Instagram, you know, whatever. It's crazy reading a title like that. It's just like, man, people really will do anything for fame. But we're going to get right into it, guys. This is a video by Destiny. I will have a link below to his to his video as well as to his reason, as well to his channel. Please check the description below. All credit goes to him, obviously. Uh, make sure to let me your thoughts on the context when you guys take a reaction. Uh, do you like it? Do you love it? What do you think of my opinion? What are your opinions? I want to know your thoughts. Uh, let me know below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoy, and check out my social media down on the screen as well. But let's get into this. Latham allegedly stabbed 52 year old Timmy Durham to death. There's blood all over the place. I just got assaulted and jumped. Aggravated manslaughter. Who drives 100 miles an hour through a That's residential so neighborhood? What are you gonna do, Karen? Single minded goal of becoming famous on TikTok. All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna be explaining how an 18 year old kid from Vineland, New Jersey, ended up in jail for murdering his neighbor because his thirst for clout got the best of him. You know, it's a really tragic line of events and was completely avoidable if the right intervention was taken place, but that never happened. One small problem spiraled out of control and eventually turned into a chaotic shitstorm that couldn't be stopped once things got too far. And I first heard about this story from a viewer of mine who messaged me on Instagram saying, Hey Destiny, you have probably have seen this or not, I want you to react to it. I know it happened two months ago, but I just heard of it now. And she linked me a video saying, did teen kill neighbor to become famous on TikTok? I even stopped watching the video because I can watch you react to it. So please do. And by the way, I don't really do reaction videos, but obviously this person whose name that I'm not going to even try pronouncing in fear of butchering it really wanted me to look into the story and talk about it. And that is exactly what I did. I investigated to see what happened and man. I seriously had to roll my eyes after reading up on the entire situation. So basically what happened was this 16 year old kid named Zachary Latham moved into his grandparents house on Thornhill Road in Vineland, New Jersey and quickly got into some beef with his new neighbors after Mr. Durham, the husband and father who lived next door, complained to Zach's grandparents about his alleged reckless driving once he got there. And you know how some kids are. Once they get their license, they act like they've they never been in a car before and start yeah. driving around like they're in Mario Kart. But based on my understanding, after the talk that Mr. Durham had with Zach's grandparents ended, Zach's grandpa pulled him to the side and was like, Hey, yo, Zach, come over here, B. You gotta stop all that crazy driving you doing around my hood before me and the missus decided to put your ass back on the street and you know basically uh they forced zach to go on over to mr durham's house and apologize for driving around the neighborhood like a crackhead that just got his license for the first time however i just want to point out like uh, just the way you did that uh that's the uh, not not to be like you know but like my my mom would have like she wouldn't just pull me to the side she'd she to beat the hell out of me and then maybe go apologize. Based on what I've gathered after looking into the story deeper, Zach's apology was filled with nothing but lies. And soon after that, he quickly went back to his antics and continued on throughout the community with his reckless driving. Mr. Durham, now seeing that Zach really didn't care and completely dismissed what had happened earlier today as if he was a dementia patient with short-term memory loss, got really annoyed. And his impression of Zach being his new neighbor in his neighborhood plummeted into a deep, dark, fiery oh hole of hell that could never return. From that point on there- You see those pictures? He just looked like a deuce. He really did not like Zach. And that is yeah, when everything lie. started to go downhill and was the catalyst for what would one day start a bloody fight that would end up taking Mr. Durham's life. 
And you know, I think it's very important for me to clarify that the killing of Mr. Durham didn't just happen out of nowhere. It wasn't a random occurrence of unlucky events that led to this deadly altercation between Mr. Durham and Zack. Because what most people fail to realize is that after the initial confrontation two years ago, there were many more small fights, arguments, and skirmishes between Mr. Durham, his family, and Zachary Latham. Like, this thing has been boiling up for a while now, and tensions have been rising. Like, for example, a month before the killing, on April 6th, Latham recorded himself embroiled in a heated confrontation with Mr. Durham's wife, Catherine, in which he, in a video that I'm going to show you guys in like a second, calls her Karen over and over again after she complains about his wild driving. What are you going to do, Karen? That's not my name. So get my now, that only applies in a certain situation, though. You can't just wrote to everybody and be like oh you're a karen especially if she's complaining about something that you're doing wrong my name's straight like, no. you I'll okay karen See, well, he's using go ahead get my tag get, like a deuce, get my tag karen my name is not karen so get my name straight get my tag it's okay and after posting that clip he went viral on TikTok. That specific clip accumulated over 3 million views on his TikTok account. Damn. And the people who commented on the video were suggesting that he cut her tires, egg her house, and continue to mess with her. Oh my God, guys. Oh my God. This is the bad part of social media, man. People, people like this who gas up people. Now, to be fair, they probably don't, they didn't know the context of it. They probably thought that she was just some Karen who was complaining over some, over some stupid stuff, not, not really knowing what was going on or what he was doing or the fact they had beef before. But the, like, like the people like this who gas me up to tell people who do these things, like, come on guys, like, and even more like you can imagine how he felt after realizing that people actually enjoyed his destructive behavior and that they actually found it entertaining especially when considering that most of his previous videos got no more than 150 likes at most inside his mind he was probably thinking that this was his time to shine and was actively thinking of new ways to fuck with his next door neighbors and days later though zach actually pulled up to mrs durham's house and shouted hey karen we went viral obviously trying to get inside mrs durham's head by taunting her and actually in another video that i saw that he recorded it shows him having a confrontation with william durham jr which is uh, her 21 year old son as he walks up to zach's car saying get out of the car bro and then zach responds back by saying that he's armed with a knife and then he took that video which he recorded posted it to his tiktok with the description karen's son found the video went viral and tried taking me out of the car and actually in an article it says here police responded to this incident and took accounts from both durham and latham but no charges were filed according to an investigation and the article it also says he has also blown her a kiss as he sped by while driving to his house so obviously he was just just continuing to mess with her and trying to taunt her you know trying to get a reaction out of these are these type these are these uh these type of people who want fame so 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 much like it's just driving them their one and only goal is to get famous they need people to gas them up they're attention seekers they're attention seekers in the heart and like in the most extreme way they need people to see them and to pay attention to them and see who they are like like <sighs> The fact he constantly kept egging these people on, like, I'm sorry, he, once he saw the three million views, he was probably like, oh, shit, I got to keep fucking with these people. He was like, I'm, I'm about to get it. He was like, let me let me take it from zero to 100. Like, and it's that type of behavior that can go so, so far. Cause, I mean, they're, they're, there's playing and then there's taking things too far. And obviously, at first, maybe he was playing and being a bit of a dick, but obviously things went way farther than what they're supposed to. Out of her that's the kind of guy that he is yeah. you know this zach guy whoever the fuck he is is a straight up dickhead yeah. like he's an actual yeah. asshole yeah. and to be honest i would never want someone like him to be my neighbor because like we would definitely be fighting every other week if he was on some bullshit like that while living right next door to me but uh after reading up on some articles about this guy and who he is i couldn't find much like information about his life and his personal background was pretty sparse 
However, after doing a little digging, I found out that this guy Zack was emancipated at 17 and was a soldier in the army serving as a National Guard private at 18. Which is ironic, since being a part of the National Guard means your job is to serve and protect your state. Well, people, I know people who know go into the army at a young age, you know, like there's a lot of them who have anger problems or they, they're looking for ways to like, you know, get out there aggressive and stuff. So... Like, this is normally would be a good thing, right? But it was maybe probably, well, I'm guessing, like, a bad thing for him because he, like you said, they probably, he probably had anger problems. He probably liked guns and stuff like that. And going to the army where they teach you how to use a lot of the stuff that, you know, defend slash hurt the enemy. It's like you come back home and they use that instead on not, the, like, on the, the people that you're supposed to protect. So and that's why, like, for certain people going to the army is a bad thing. Like, a lot of people going to the army with mental states with mental uh, diseases and stuff like that, they come back, they come back like a thousand times more fucked up than when they were before because of that. So it, I guarantee he probably had some dark problems in his head. And it was like, let me go here to try to like maybe do something in my life and maybe work our way together. aggressive. This could be a good thing, but unfortunately this happened to turn out to be a bad thing. Country and community and not terrorizing and being a nuisance to your next door neighbors. I also found some images of him from his TikTok account that makes him look like a straight up egocentric kid. As you can see here in this image, it says 350Z owner. I love 5W-30. Is that a Tomei dog? Zazayri. Neighbors hate you. Cuts everybody off. What are blinkers? Road rage. Loud exhaust. My DE will smoke. What is this? Dog, this shit is so over the place. I've never seen a TikTok play like everything is so over the place, bro. Like, why is it like that? Like, wrong Ray. <laughs> oh my god, look what he just standing in the picture, too. Like, yep, yeah, uh huh. I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm bad man right here. Uh huh. I know I'm talking about them. Got this nice car behind me. Like, he just, he just looks like a dude. Smoke your HR? Oh God, is this how douchebags communicate yes. with each other? In another image, it says, the people in the army, because he's a National Guard in the army, he says, uh, drives a Mustang or Camaro with 20% APR. I can drink more than you. He gets called stuck up, always loud, chair force, anger issues, has guns, likes to party. So clearly this guy's an asshole. Yeah. And he's making it out to seem as if these personality traits are actually cool. Pretty weird. Uh, and another image it says owning a Corvette. By the way, I don't know how you have all these cars yeah. at 17, but uh, I guess good for him. I Daddy's money. Race. What's yep. the speed limit? Wanna race? Revs at the red light. Gets heated on for having a nice car. Ew, a Mustang stuck up. Yeah, this guy is basically like the epitome of everything I hate about people yeah. personified. He apparently also has a history. The appearance is eagle. Just go back. Oh my god, man. You got a song by uh. Uh, what uh, Beyonce Eagle? I like was, like th this song's about him. Like, oh my god! Like, <laughs> he just he just, he just lay on top of the car. Like he looks hot, bro. It's like no, you don't. You look creepy. Like if I would have rolled past on the scene with his garage or just like laying on his house, I'm like, who the fuck is that? Like, come on, man of simple assault, terroristic threats, and criminal mischief on his juvenile record. So when taking that into account as well, Zach is obviously a troublemaker. And you want to know what the crazy thing is? The Durham family was trying to sort this whole thing out the legal way via the courts and through the law enforcement, but the police weren't helping very much and said that COVID-19 made the courts close. As stated here, the Durhams, their lawyers wrote, sought help from the Vineland police several times, but were repeatedly told that they could not sign a complaint against Mr. Latham since the courts were closed because of the coronavirus pandemic. And by the way, I get that the coronavirus was very tragic, is very tragic, as it's still going on, and, um, you know, we gotta take it seriously, but are we really just gonna sit here and disregard the legal complaints from a person who's in desperate need of help from a dickhead next-door neighbor who's obviously terrorizing them? Like, where do you get help if not from law enforcement? The deceased father's legal team notes that a judge and several cops live in the area and knew about the past trouble Latham had caused. Latham even shared a video of a police officer confirming that he won't take any action even though he saw video evidence. It's unclear which incident he is addressing. Are you serious? We would arrest you. But you won't do anything even though you saw video proof, correct? Correct. Okay. 
for your video. That is correct. Thank you. Dumbass say what's up, TikTok. TikTok? Yeah, say what's up. This another attention seeker, guys. He, he'll never be one of be TikTok. So look at the feeling. He's probably just saw this side. He's like, oh shit. Everybody gonna know me. They know you now. It's the dude who told the kid, hey, keep keep harassing this guy. It, it's fine. It's cool. Keep harassing him. You know, we won't do anything. You know, keep keep doing that. You're you're, you're fine. You're fine. Like, bro, I can't believe this. Like, who, who, who like. This shit is irritating because it sounds so stupid, man. And because of fuck, man, because of this nigga, because I, it's not I'm not saying solely him, but because of things like that, that happen, like them not taking it seriously, them you know not doing everything they can. I mean, even the course workload, you could have done something, right? Something like try to like help them make their stop. But instead, you tell them, "Hey, we're not gonna do anything, so you're cool. Keep doing what you're doing." And not look way I blank, but like. It's like, hey, man, like, we know that you shot that person. We shot a video of you shooting that person. But because it's COVID and, you know, jailhouses are closed. And, of course, we're, we're, we're not going to do anything. So you just you just keep doing what you're doing, sir. Like, come on, man. Like, bullshit. bullshit. So my question is, what do you do when you're trying to do things the right way, but there's no one around to help you? Excuse me, guys. All right, sorry about it, guys. My headphones just, like, went off for a second there. I don't know why, but... We're back. I'm gonna took it back a little bit. Yeah, say what's up. Just stupid. It's fine. It's so my question is, what do you do when you're trying to do things the right way, but there's no one around to help you and your family, especially after two whole years? Well, you try and take matters into your own hands. Unfortunately, though, things went sideways for Mr. Durham when he tried to do just that. Because on May 4th, being the asshole that Zach Latham was, yeah. Zach allegedly swerved his car onto the side of the road where Mr. Durham's 17 year old son was riding his bike. And that, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Mr. Serious? Durham had it's had like enough and decided to finally confront Zach face to face like a man after two years. And especially considering that Zach was no longer a child and was now 18, I suppose he was no longer in fear of being charged with child abuse if things turned physical. Gentlemen, child really abuse if things turned physical. As stated here, though, after Zach, you know, basically tried to hit his son, Mr. Durham pulled his son. truck into the street to block Latham's truck. Catherine Durham, his wife, recording the exchange on her phone, challenged Latham over the incident involving her son. Video footage shows Latham throwing an elbow at Catherine Durham, pushing her back, knocking the phone from her hand, and speeding off toward his home. And then when Latham got to his house, his wife, because yeah, uh, he's actually married at 18, which is weird, who was recording the scene with her phone, walked down the driveway to confront the Durham's sons as they came onto the property, because uh, the whole family was actually involved in the situation. They went over there like a squad trying to confront Zach about, you know, just everything that happened over the course of two years. Sarah Latham, Zach's wife, told the Durham sons that they had better back up because they were not going to like what was coming out of the house. So obviously she was threatening the entire family. Soon after, uh, William Durham, you know, their father and the husband arrived with his truck. Latham's public defenders say in their filing that he and his wife can be heard on the video footage clearly telling the Durhams several times to get off the property and they are not welcome. The Durhams, their hands visibly empty, continued to approach, the prosecution filing says. So now uh, the Durhams had crossed the line from their property to Latham's grandparents' property. But here's where things took a turn for the worst. Because apparently after he got back home after speeding off earlier in the story, he actually went inside his house, got a couple of knives and his stun gun, and came back outside to confront the Durham family. So clearly this kid wanted to fight. He wanted he to smoke. He wanted to get down and dirty and, you know, things went bad. So yeah, after going back outside, he uh, confronted the family and fired his stun gun at one of the sons. It then says William Durham then grabbed at Latham, who slashed him in the right arm with his knife before retreating in his garage. So obviously, this is exactly where things started to go really crazy. Both Mr. Durham and Zach were in the heat of the moment. Their adrenaline levels must have been through the roof. 
The first thing is like he tried, Mr. Durham tried to solve this peacefully. He tried to go to the court, no matter what help him. The kid would listen. Obviously, his grandparents were too fucking soft on him because they ain't read. Really, he didn't really care what they said. So it just, just he was trying to do the right thing. He was trying to do it by the law. But of course, it's like, you know, the world isn't black and white where, you know, everything just works. This is a perfect world, right? So the law wanted to help him. His grandparents didn't do shit, and he wouldn't change their attitude. He kept being a little dick, and because of that, then it escalated this far. Like I don't blame like the like after that point, you you put you elbow my wife, and you try to hit my son. At that point, I would have been like, okay, well, I'm like, well, when I got to take it my own hands, and we're gonna solve it. But like the little bitch that he is, he went and got weapons and stuff, fighting him like a man, like. <sighs> And I understand, blah, 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 they walk onto their property, on his property, but, like, what else were they supposed to do? Nobody was helping them. What, what, what were they going to wait for until he actually ran one of them over and killed them? Like, I mean, it happened anyway, but it's like, come on, bro. Like, man, the world can be such an unfair place sometimes. And uh, they were in, in full-on battle mode. But it didn't stop there because after that happened, uh, apparently Mr. Durham had followed Zack toward the garage that Zack was heading to. It then says here a brief but violent melee then ensued, during which the stun gun was fired repeatedly and Latham's wife urged him to drop the knife. So yeah, you can imagine. Sarah, this 18 year old kid's wife, was recording the whole thing. And once I reveal why she was recording this entire thing to begin with, you guys will be disgusted. Unfortunately though, in a horrific line of events, Mr. Durham was stabbed under the armpit, puncturing his lungs in what was thought to be the fatal wound that killed him. Perry, Latham's lawyer, did not respond to requests for comment on the suggestion that his client had lured William Durham to his death in hopes of gaining social media notoriety. Because as it stands right now, their lawyers, the lawyers that represent Mr. Durham's family, they genuinely believe that the whole reason for Zach continuously trying to mess with the Durham family was to get reactions out of them so that he could then record them, post it to his TikTok, and try to become TikTok famous. And you know what? In this instance, I absolutely do believe TikTok did have a role to play in the way that things ended up in the situation. You know, Zach's own narcissism, ego mixed in with the weird ass people in his comment section telling him to continue to keep fucking with his neighbors led directly to this tragedy. But in my opinion, it's not even TikTok's fault necessarily, because in my opinion, TikTok is just a symptom of a larger pre-existing condition that we've had in our society ever since people figured out that they could gain fame from social media. You know, the idea of getting famous on social media is like, like an intoxicating drug that takes- I wanna, sorry, I wanna talk about something. You know, like he said, you know, becoming famous on social media, people, oh, they wanna become TikTok stars, they wanna become Instagram, Instagram famous, you know, uh, YouTubers, they wanna become famous, but they wanna become famous on social media because social media has made it easier for people to do that. But at the same time, is it really worth everything, your dignity, your soul, your life, for like five, 15 minutes of like fame? Like, is it really worth that? Is, is it really worth that? Because I've heard some horrible stories from many celebrities who are super famous and rich. And it doesn't seem that it's like it's always peachy, like just because they're fans and money that everything's just like rainbows and stuff. No. Because a lot of these celebrities do suicide. A lot of these celebrities pop pills. They overdose. We look at Robin Williams. Like, like it's not as amazing as, as, they, as they make it seem. I mean, as people think. Because you, some of these celebrities, like, it looks like hell for them. For what they go through to keep that fan and get that fan, like, can you imagine the entire world in your business constantly? And yeah, from our point of view, it looks funny, though, know, because the money, the cars, the women, like, all that stuff looks amazing. But until you actually get in there, you have to deal with some things that they deal with. It's like, how can I say anything? Like, you, you don't know nothing. So my question is, like, is it really worth everything for like that little bit of fame you may get and that little bit of money yeah i know it's hard come probably come for me because you're a youtuber and you're trying to make money you're trying to become famous yes and no i'm trying to make a career out of this somebody can live well but at the same time i don't care about being famous honestly i don't want the whole world in my business i don't want people looking at me every time i do something but unfortunately in the industry that i am that's what happens 
But it's like people want this fame. They want this stardom so bad. They want this attention. They want people to love him, people to like him. It's like you have no idea what that stuff is going to cost you in the end because people just don't seem to care. Until it actually happens, it's like, damn, I wish I never did this. I've heard a lot of stories playing so like, man, I wish I go back to times where I wasn't famous and where I was broke because it seemed easier back then over your entire body once it enters your bloodstream and just the thought of being able to do something wild to capture the attention of millions of people across the world really has got some people hooked like a fish on bait yeah. unaware of the impending doom about to come their way once they're captured by a fisherman but in this case that fisherman is tiktok <laughs> but yeah zachary latham as of right now was charged with first degree manslaughter Shit. after claiming his actions were in self-defense and Unsurprisingly, Mr. Durham's wife and two children were charged with simple assault and trespassing. Since they did in fact cross over to Zachary Latham's property and, you know, did contribute to the altercation that happened. But their lawyers, they want the charges against the family dropped and Latham charged with first degree murder. Because their theory is basically the same as mine. As it says here in this article, Latham, they say, deliberately drew William Durham to his death in a bid for social media celebrity. In a June letter to Webb McRae, the lawyers Diane M. Ruberton and Robert R. Simmons noted that Latham's wife, Sarah Latham, recorded the brawl on her phone and said she did so because it was her and Latham's intent to post these videos to TikTok and become TikTok famous. Yeah. Pretty wild stuff. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, let me know down below. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram so that you can always know what I have planned next. And with that being said, it's your guy Destiny, and I'll catch you guys and ladies in the next one. All right, so in an updated report I read after recording this video, I found out that this guy, Zachary Latham, isn't even in jail because apparently the judge who is currently overseeing this case didn't think it was necessary to jail him until his next court date, which is scheduled to be in May of 2021. It says here in denying pretrial detention, the order said, Further, for the reasons set forth on the record and herein, the court does not find clear and convincing evidence that pretrial detention is necessary to reasonably assure the defendant's appearance in court when required, the protection of the safety of any other person or the community, and that the defendant will not obstruct or attempt to obstruct the criminal justice process. The state did not meet its burden to detain, that there are no conditions that would reasonably assure the defendant's appearance in court when required, the protection of the safety of any other person and the community, and that the defendant will not obstruct or it's attempt to obstruct the me. criminal justice process. Therefore, the defendant is released on level. Sorry, so like James Jones, but he's a goddamn menace. They're like, did you not see the videos? This dude is a tension throw seeking jackass. Like, like he. And just like by by this happening, by nothing, like if nothing happens to him, it's just gonna give him more reassurance of like, oh, well, I can keep doing this because nothing's gonna happen, blah blah blah, until it, something really happens. And like, there's already been a death. Like, what could happen next? Like, like it's frustrating because like sometimes it just seems the world's not fair. Like our justice system is so crap. Because like, are you serious? Somebody is dead. An elderly man is dead because of this person. Who constantly harassed and bothered them simply for 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 fucking TikToks and because they they told his grandparents on him and his grandparents are soft as tissue as far as I'm concerned because like <sighs> there's no reason that this had to be taken this far there's no reason that somebody had to uh, had to die there's no reason this all could have been handled. It could be handled, done with, over with, you know. They they all go on with their lives. Instead, somebody's dead. A, a young person's probably, maybe, probably, hopefully going to jail for a very long time, if not life. So his life is ruined. The family's life is ruined because their they're, they're, they're husband and their father's dead, you know. So it's just... It's just so damn unnecessary. It just makes me so upset because it it didn't need to happen. It did not need to go this far. Level 2 monitoring. 
Therefore, the motion for pretrial detention is denied. So all this means is that this kid will be free and out of jail for at least nine months before appearing in court again, because they don't think he's a flight risk. You know, he won't try to avoid his court hearing and will come in in a timely manner when they request him to do so. And you know, I kind of believe that this is just another example of yep. being privileged in America. Yep. You know, if you fit into a particular socioeconomic background, that is. And I can almost guarantee you that if this kid wasn't rich, you know, was a bit tanned on that day that he appeared in court and lived in the inner city, yep. this judge would have had him in jail until his next court date in 2021. It's a sad reality of the imbalances between being rich versus being poor in America. But you know, it is what it is. It's a cold world out here, baby. Anyway, like I said before, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, guys, I'm gonna stop the video right here. I completely agree. I feel like if that was somebody like me, like. <laughs> Man, I would have been arrested so fast, and, and I'm laughing, but I'm being I'm being serious at the same time. Like you know, you got sometimes laugh to make the anger go away, but it's like, and that was like somebody else. I guarantee you that they would have been taken immediately. They would have been injured. They would have been denied. And that was me, and I had stabbed that old man. Like, come on, like come on. And now this deuce bag is free, thinking, oh, I can do anything I want. And no one's gonna be able, no one's gonna be able to stop me. And I have all these people who love and support me. These these fans, these fans who are probably gonna keep gassing them up. Are gonna be like, hey man, you did nothing wrong. They came on your property. They started something, even though you're the one that kept messing with them, not knowing the context, and they not know the context of what was really going on. But hey, you keep doing you, bro. It's like, come on, man. It's like, it's frustrating for me that 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 that. <sighs> That this even happened. It's frustrating because I feel it was so damn unnecessary and it didn't need to happen. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on the little conversation. What do you guys think? What's your opinion? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? If you disagree, then, um, just, just, just let me know your thoughts down below. I'm not even going to, I'm trying to draw this up, but if you disagree, let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure, again, to leave those Chris Rizzo video as well to Destiny's channel. Please go check him out. I'll also leave his Twitter and Instagram below there if you guys want to go follow him on there. Along with my social media, will be in the description as well. Credit, of course, uh, you know, again, goes to Destiny. Uh, he did a great job with this video. And, you know, what I like about Destiny that is personal. Like, Destiny is... I don't, I don't want to try to say he's very, he, let's say he's him. Like, like anybody else though, could have been like, oh my God, well, they came on their property. And they're just like, no, like this dude's a piece of garbage. Like, and like, and like he's a piece of garbage and he, he's, he deserves to be in jail. So I like that scene. I like his appearance in the matter, but let me know yours. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. If you guys enjoy the video, you want to see me do more reactions to Destiny, everybody love. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Make so again, to check out Lucas Chris and Rizzo video as well to his Rizzo, uh, well, to his channel and his Twitter and Instagram, and make sure to follow me on social media as well. But this is Cracks. I'm out. Peace.